Welcome to the program you're watching Venus Daily by the VNA. And up next are today's headlines. Leaders of the party, the government, and the National Assembly warmly receive Armenian President Serge Sargsyan. The Eighth Theological Workshop of the Communist Parties of Vietnam and China concludes with success. The World Bank releases its report with a new approach on green growth at a seminar in Hanoi. Armenian President Serge Sargsyan paid a one-day visit to Vietnam on June 9th. Following his talk with President Chun Tin Sang, the Armenian state leader had meetings with Party General Secretary Nguyen Phu Trọng, National Assembly Nguyen Sinh Hùng, and Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dũng. General Secretary Chao affirmed that Vietnam always attaches importance to relations with traditional friendly countries such as Armenia. He expressed his pleasure over the development of political relations between the two countries in recent years. Vietnam desires to develop good relations and bilateral cooperation with Armenia in the near future for the mutual benefit of both countries. President Sargsyan said Armenia considered Vietnam a close and reliable partner in Southeast Asia. He pledged to promote multifaceted cooperation with Vietnam, especially in the fields of economics, trade, education and training. Meeting with the Armenian President, Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung said the Vietnamese government will actively implement agreements reached during the visit to further develop the two countries' relations. Prime Minister Dung proposed the two sides continue to complete legal foundations for bilateral cooperation to facilitate two-way trade, increase the exchange of delegations at all levels, and organize trade promotion activities. He also suggested that both sides soon set up bilateral cooperation mechanisms to effectively implement cooperation in economics, trade, science, technology, education and training, and tourism. For his part, President Sargsyan affirmed that Armenia wants to further boost economic, trade and investment cooperation with Vietnam. He called for the early establishment of the Intergovernmental Committee and more information exchange between the two countries' businesses. He also said Armenia is willing to receive Vietnam students to study in the country. At his meeting with National Assembly Chairman Nguyen Sinh Hùng, the Armenian president proposed establishing a Vietnam-Armenia Friendship Parliamentary Group to help promote the ties between the two countries' legislatures. Chairman Hùng expressed satisfaction at the political relations between the two countries. He suggested that the two national assemblies share experiences in lawmaking and supervision of law execution, as well as coordinate closely at multilateral forums. Deputies at the third session of the 13th National Assembly discussed a comprehensive plan to restructure the national economy. The debate on June 8th was broadcast live on national radio and television. Most National Assembly deputies voiced their approval of the plan's general contents, which defied three priorities for restructuring in the next five years. There are investment restructuring with a focus on public investment, the financial market with commercial bank system and financial organizations at the center, and reform of state-owned enterprises. The deputies also agreed with the overall target of the restructuring process, which is to change the institutions, mechanisms, tools of distribution, management and use of national sources in line with the new growth model. As a result, the country will have a more appropriate, effective economic structure, thus improving the economy's competitiveness and ensuring sustainable development. The deputies noted that while the plan has outlined 12 groups of main solutions, it fails to propose detailed measures and roadmaps to carry out these, neither does it elaborate on the impacts of the restructuring process. They also called for solutions to emerging social and environmental issues to ensure a sustainable economic development. 
the eighth theoretical workshop between the Communist Party of Vietnam, CPV, and the Communist Party of China, CPC, took place in the northern Guangling province from June 7th to June 9th. Đinh Thế Huynh, Politburo member, secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam's Central Committee, CPVCC, and director of the CPVCC's Popularization and Education Commission, and Liu Yun Shan, Politburo member, secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee's secretariat and director of the CPCCC's Propaganda Department, spoke highly of the workshop's outcomes. The focus of the three-day event was Vietnam's new model of economic growth and the change of methods of economic development in China. Participants analyzed theoretical and practical issues as well as experience relating to the shift of economic growth model and industrial and agricultural restructuring, the combination of economic and socio-cultural development and environmental protection was also discussed. The two sides also share experiences in how to improve the party's leadership during the process of changing the model of economic growth. On June 8th, the World Bank released its report entitled Inclusive Green Growth, the Pathway to Sustainable Development at a seminar in Hanoi. The new approach is suggested by the report is thought to be helpful for Vietnam as the country is drafting a framework strategy on green growth. The report emphasizes that green growth is necessary, effective and affordable, and various habits, the lack of suitable financial tools, are major hindrances to green growth. The report says all countries, rich and poor, have opportunities to green their growth without slowing the development process. According to the report, improved environment activities will benefit the poorest and most vulnerable people, and green growth policies must be designed carefully to make full use of benefits and reduce costs. So what seems to have happened over time is that you seem to have become better at designing environmental regulation that enables firms to adapt better and that reduces the cost. The World Bank report also challenges governments to not only measure what is being produced but also take into consideration what is being used up and polluted in the process. Vietnam's draft framework strategy on green growth to 2020 set the targets of reducing energy consumption per GDP by 2.5 to 3 percent per year and cutting the emission of greenhouse gas by 10 to 15 percent in 2020 compared to the level in 2010. The draft will be submitted to the Prime Minister by the end of this month. Vietnam's Electricity Corporation on June 8th signed with China Communications Construction Company an engineering procurement construction contract for the seaport in the Xunhai Thermal Power Center. The port, part of the master plan of the Xunhai Thermal Power Center, is designed to handle about 12 million tons of coal and oil to supply to thermal power plants in the center. The newly designed contract is valued at more than 180 million US dollars, including insurance premium. It consists of the building of two wops, capable of handling coal ships with tonnage of 30,000 DWT, a wharf for 1,000 DWT oil tankers, and other necessary infrastructure. The port is expected to start operation in the third quarter of 2014. It will play an important role in ensuring the smooth construction and operation of the Xunhai Thermal Power Plants 1 and 3, supplying power to meet the demands of socio-economic development of southern region and the nation in general. The Ho Dynasty Citadel in the central province of Tanghua has attracted an increasing number of tourists. Since it was recognized as World Cultural Heritage last year, the UNESCO will officially present the site with a certification of its heritage status this month. 
a total of 11,000 visitors came to the site in the first six months of this year, a sharp increase compared to the figure of 2011 at 16,000. The main attraction is the gigantic stone citadel built six centuries ago. It has remained almost intact through ups and downs in history. The rock site in Anton Mountain, Vinh Yên Commune, Vinh Lập District, which supplied stone for the building of the citadel, and the Namza worship platform also draw many tourists. Tenghua Province plans to conduct deeper research on the whole dynasty citadel, while investing more in the management, preservation and development of the site. The province hopes that the site will receive 35,000 visitors a year by 2015. And we have covered all the stories for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.